Yeah, we'll send a black back on, but that's okay. Um, so I I was awake all last night thinking about God. I should talk about this, and I should talk about that. And I know I only have three minutes, so I'm going to back up because some of the things are not on the slide. I'm going to say that one of the things I've been very interested in over the years is understanding the importance of biodiversity for ecological function. And I'm so glad Kevin mentioned species interactions. And so in particular, I spent a lot of my career on working on fruit-eating birds and other fruit-eating vertebrates and looking at how they impact seed dispersal processes. Um, I've also done species distribution modeling at sort of regional and continental scales. And long-term dynamics of, of birds at um, a site in Western Amazonia. So I'm gonna give you a few punchlines from some of those studies. One of the, the punchlines is, is that biodiversity does matter for seed dispersal processes. When you go from a system that's relatively species poor in Costa Rica to very species rich in the Amazon, you increase the redundancy of the function, which should make the system more resilient to loss. Yet on the other hand, there's still, even in the Amazon, few quantitatively important dispersers that you know, impact the plant populations. So when you get some of these hunted out, which is you see in Western Amazonia, not hunted out completely, but abundance is lower, it, the consequences to plants is the long distance dispersal function. You get truncated seed dispersals. So one, that'd be very interesting to map over a, a larger scale. So I'm, really the point of my talk today, or brief, is to think about the challenges of taking these very important local processes and integrating them across the scales from landscape to regional and so forth. The other point I want to make is that there's real data deficiency in the Amazon in terms of you know, what we know about species interactions, what we know about abundances and so forth. At our site in uh, Tipitini Biodiversity Station, we've been doing long-term studies for about 18 years. Second punchline, if we would have started 10 years ago, we would have had a very different picture of the story. About 10 years ago, the population which fluctuated like this started to go down in 2009. I would say community-wide, we've lost about 50% of the birds, canopy and understory. We're in a 1.5 million hectare reserve. These, we correlated these changes with ENSO events, with La Nina. It's getting wetter there. That's the second take home observation. The third is many of these birds, when you've worked in the forest for a long time, you know where to find them. You know, if I go to this bamboo patch, I'm gonna see this bird. If I go over here, I'm gonna see this bird. I think I would love the grand slam of remote sensing. I would love Angelica to come to my site because I think we can leverage remote sensing and all these tools and scale up and do a much better job. Thank you.